Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another classic example to show you the different kinds of inflection points and what kind of information we can get out of taking the first and second derivative. All right, so here we have our function. Let's first find all the critical points where the slope is equal to zero, which may either be a maximum, a minimum, or an inflection point. So take the first derivative, f prime of x, that is equal to 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. We're going to set that first derivative equal to zero, f prime of x is equal to zero. We know that it's not equal to zero, we're going to set it equal to zero so we can find the max, mins, and horizontal inflection points. So zero equals six x squared minus six x minus 12, divide both sides by six, we get zero equals x squared minus x, oop, not minus, not plus, but minus two. So, which means we have 0 is equal to, if we factor that, we get x minus 2 and x plus 1. Yes, if we multiply it out, we get the same thing here. So that means that x is equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 1. Now, these are either maximi, minimum, or horizontal inflection points. So max, min, or horizontal inflection points. We don't know yet which one because we now have to take the second derivative and see if we find the same values there. If we find any one of these two values as a solution to the set in the second derivative equal to zero, then we're dealing with inflection points. If not, these are max or min. All right, so to figure that out, let's take the second derivative. So f double prime of x, f double prime of x is equal to, we take the first derivative, and this becomes 12x minus six, we're going to set f double prime of x equal to zero, which means zero is equal to 12x minus six, or 12x equals six, or x equals one half. So here we have a value for x which is different what we found over here and over here, which means we know that this is an inflection point, but it also means that these two are not inflection points. These are either maximum or minimum values, and this therefore has to be an inflection point. Not just any inflection point, this is a non-horizontal inflection point, because if it was a horizontal inflection point, we would have found this value over here when we set the first derivative equal to zero. Now let's try to graph that. Now of course, before we can graph that, we need to find the corresponding y values of those three points, those three critical points. So f, when x is equal to two, is equal to, when we plug a two in there, we get uh, two cubed, that's eight, times two is 16 minus, that would be 12, minus 24. So when x equals 2, we have y equals minus 20. All right, for the second point, x equals minus, minus 1. And what do we get? Minus 1 cubed is minus 1, that's minus 2. Minus 1 squared is positive 1 times a negative 3 is minus 3. And minus 1 times a minus 12 is a plus uh, 12. So this is equal to, let's see here, 7. Is that correct? Yes, it is, 7. And finally, we plug in the value for x equals to 1 half. So f, when x equals 1 half, then is equal to 1 half cubed is 1 eighth, times 2 is 1 quarter. 1 half squared is 1 quarter, that's minus 3 quarters. And 1 half times this would be minus 6. So it would be minus 6.5. So those are the three corresponding y values, minus 20, positive 7, and minus 6.5. So let's find those three points on the graph. So let's graph it over here. We've got our y-axis, our x-axis. The first point, when x is 2, y is minus 20. 1, 2, minus 20 should be down here somewhere. So it would be this point right there. Okay, we know because we used x equals 2 here, that that has a horizontal slope and it's either a maximum or a minimum value. The second point, when x equals negative 1, y is equal to 7. So negative 1 over here, y is equal to 7, that would be right around here somewhere, that would be this point. And again, we know the slope there is 0 because it's either a max or a min. Looks like that's the max and that's the min. And in between, for x equals 1 half, we have a corresponding y value of minus 6.5. So here's 1 half, and minus 6.5, that would be about here. 
And so at this location, let me move this over, minus 6.5. And so at that location, we have a non-horizontal inflection point. Now, I draw a little vertical line. It doesn't have to be exactly vertical, but we know that it's not a horizontal inflection point. It's a non-horizontal inflection point. That looks like a max, a min, an inflection point. So it looks like this is concave down, concave up, and the function probably looks like this. Okay, how do we know that for sure? Well, we can plug these two values back in the second derivative to see if it's concave up or concave down. So let's take the second derivative, f double prime of x, and let's first plug in this value right here, 2. Our second derivative is right here, so when we plug that in, we get 12 times 2 minus 6, which is 24 minus 6. I don't even need to know what the value is. I know that it's a positive value. Positive means concave up. So for x equals 2, right here, it's concave up. That means I must have a minimum value, so that looks correct. For the second value, x equals negative 1, we have f double prime of x equals negative 1. That's equal to 12 times negative 1 minus 6. I don't even know what the value is. I don't need to know, but I know that it's going to be a negative value. It's less than 0. That means there we have concave down when x is equal to negative 1. Concave down means I have a maximum value, so it looks like I drew the function correctly. So that's how we use the first derivative and the second derivative information to draw a graph like that.